can rescue me. This is my prayer. If you are mine, if you are mine, I wouldn't want to go to heaven. I cherish the day I won't go astray I won't be afraid You won't catch me running You're ruling the way that I move You take my I cherish the day, I won't go astray, I won't be afraid, you won't catch me running. I cherish the day, I won't go astray, I won't run away. I cherish the day. I 
We got this shagging our woman. She go and say, hey baby, me, I like you. I go and show you all of my particulars and my meows. You go say, okay, baby. So you follow the woman to home. She take you to her house, yeah. And she know what to do. That's a shock it out. She go and giant you, yeah. We have this group in particular for her. Open and put him cold as a nary. I said, open and put him cold as a nary. Open and may we see. Upside down in dead of rubber. Open and may we see. Him recognize who I for sure, yeah. Open and may we see. Because him get the meaning to. Head fall down, yasra. Because him get the meaning to. Head fall down, yasra. Upside down, get the meaning to. Head fall down, yasra. Oh, I don't travel, I don't see Like any professor for this land The thing where I see I go talk about upside up and downside down For overseas what I see Communication not canine Agriculture not canine Electric not canine Them system not canine Them people not canine Them people not canine 
English man get English name. American man get American name. German man get German name. Russian man get Russian name. Chinese man get Chinese name. But African man outside don't see. Like any professor for this man. I know how to travel anywhere. Everything here under my nose. For African man outside don't see. Village Boku Road, no there. Land be Boku food, no there. No, no there, people no keep their African, African name. name. People know they think African, African style. People know no Africa great. For African man outside, don't see. Communication disorganized. Agriculture disorganized. Electric disorganized. Everything is upside down. Disorganized. Disorganized. Everything is upside down. Everything upside down. Open and put them cold dictionary. I said open and put them cold dictionary. Open and make we see. Upside down and there they're proper. Open and make we see. Them recognize who are for sure. Yeah. Open and make we see. Because them get the meaning too. Head go down, yantra. Because them get the meaning too. Head go down, yantra. Upside down, get the meaning too. Head go down, yantra. Upside down, get the meaning too. Head go down, yantra. I don't travel, I don't see. Like any professor for this land. The thing where I see, I go talk about upside up and outside down. down. But overseas, where I see communication organized, agriculture organized, electric organized, them system organized, them people organized, them people organized. English man get English name, American man get American name, German man get German name, Russian man get Russian name, Chinese man get Chinese name. For African man outside, don't see. Professor for this land, I know how to travel anywhere. Everything here under my nose. For African man outside, don't see. Village Boku Road, no there. Area Boku House, no there. Land be Boku Fool, no there. People know keep their African name. People know they think African style. People know no Africa great. For African man outside, don't see. Disorganized, agriculture disorganized, electric disorganized, everything is upside down. Disorganized, disorganized, everything is upside down. Everything upside down. Disorganized, disorganized, everything is upside down. Everything upside down. I 
You ain't doing oh. anything for us, and we can better do for ourselves. Nah, nah, so nah, from nah, now nah, on, nah, 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 nah. we're gonna use what we got, what got? to get what we want. Hey. So you better think. Think. That was a time when we had everything. That's a thing I never will forget. So I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known around the microphone. Why? Cause I get stupid. I mean outrageous. Get away from me, it's the contagious. Cause I'm the man. No one I lose the BMC. And what I choose, the lady love me. Girls adore me. I mean, even the ones who never saw me like the way that I rhyme at a show. The reason why, man, I don't know. So go, go, cut. Oh, 
Get it, girl. Get it, girl. Oh, I let go. 
You know I think the sun rises and shines on you. You know there's nothing, nothing I would not do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before I, before I let you go. Everybody loves the sunshine. Sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. Sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine Sunshine. 
sunshine. Folks get brown in the sunshine. Sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. Sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine.
we are one. That's the place it starts. We are one. And that's the way it is. We are one. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up for Dwayne Martin on tenor sax, Dashiell Smith on trumpet and vocals, Alex Jones on guitar, Milka on vocals, Jordan Manley on drum, Xavier Jones on bass, Masiki Scales on keys. Masiki Scales on keys. Hi, Nzali. Hello, everybody. Hi, thank you all for being a part of today's annual brunch. I'm Kwana, I'm one of the co-hosts for today, to this afternoon. Uh, Michelle, she'll be right up in one second. Um, but I just wanna say good morning again, and welcome to the Women Engage Awards Ceremony. You have the pleasure of being a part of today's amazing event, but there's a reason for the occasion. And I'm excited to be here on behalf of my brand, Carefree Black Girl. We are a women empowerment brand that travels nationwide to create space for black women in films. Similar to what Women Engage does locally in Georgia, we do it nationwide. All right? Um, I'm gonna welcome Michelle to the stage now as well to open up the ceremony for you all. All right, thank you so much, and I'm so excited to be with you all. And so again, good morning to my folks who are here in person, and a good morning to our folks who are joining us virtually. We're so excited for you all to join us for this momentous occasion. My name is Michelle. I use they, she pronouns, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Women Engage. Um, for some context for folks who may be new to uh, Women Engage and our organization, the work that we do, we were founded in 2014 by Malika Redmond and Margaret Cargbo right in this neighborhood in Southwest Atlanta where they launched directly from Malika Redmond's table to talk to our neighbors about the issues that matter most to them. So we're using our civic power to hold our elected officials and our broader communities accountable to the issues that are paramount to black women, femmes, and girls here in the state of Georgia. <laughs> I know, it's my family, yes. 
Since then, we have gone on to lead year-round uh, voter engagement, political education, and leadership development that focuses on youth empowerment, youth engagement, as well as an intergenerational approach. We have people from all different types of walks of life on our team, and we're so excited to be able to partner with a rich network of other people who are doing amazing work to make sure that we are collectively working towards our liberation here in Georgia and collectively across this nation when it comes to the black community. And so again, I'm joined by my amazing co-host, Kwana, the powerhouse, who's also an alum of Clark Atlanta University, which I did not know because I too am an alum of Clark Atlanta University. Whoa. I know, hey, okay, they said, you know. Yes, AUC, we gotta come back home. Okay, come back home. <laughs> Find a way or make one, okay? <laughs> So super excited to have you all here with us. Um, there's going to be an amazing show uh, lineup for us today. We're going to be honoring some amazing people and just continuing to celebrate in this moment. And so I'm so excited to share the stage with Carefree Black Girls, amazing creator and owner. Um, they were a little bit humble in their approach, but they're also an amazing artist, has been rapping for, what was it, like 12 years? Yeah, 12 yeah. years, okay. I'm saying out here has done a number of different special projects and is just a revolutionary artist. And so I'm so excited for you to be able to co-sponsor with us, co-host with us, and share this stage as we get into it. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Kwana to introduce our amazing um, speech. Um, we're video? We have a video <laughs> that we're actually going to show on our screen over here to the right. So um, I'll let our amazing technical team take it away. Welcome to Women Engage. We love you. We love her. We love them. Second annual awards brunch. Welcome to eight years of advancing women's human rights, youth empowerment, and civic engagement efforts in Georgia. Eight years of teaching eight years of learning, eight years of leading the change and paving the way as we fight for our voices and solutions to be heard, eight years of building voter power and leadership development within our communities, eight years of victories, some setbacks, growth, and innovation rooted in community empowerment and our need for change. I am Malika Redman, co-founder and CEO of Women Engaged, and today we are joining together to celebrate our joyous and revolutionary impact over the last eight years and honor other black women, trailblazers, who are changing the world. As we join together today to commemorate our impact and history, I also want to give a moment to celebrate one of our leaders that without her, Women Engage would not be here today. I want to honor my co-founder and friend, Margaret Cardbo. We honor and commemorate her memory, legacy, brilliant mind, and incomparable contribution to the movement. We still feel your impact and presence in this work, and thank you. This vision, this work, this organization started with two women, seed funding from Groundswell Fund, mentorship by Letitia Jackson, and consultation from Juanita Toffee. Women, artists, dreamers, and thinkers with an idea and commitment for change. Eight years later, and our team, influence, and reach only continues to grow, and we have expanded to new heights. Women Engaged is a social justice nonprofit that develops policy recommendations, conducts research, and organizing initiatives paired with leadership development savvy communication strategies, and civic engagement opportunities for black women and youth. Since 2014, Women Engage has been focused on strengthening the voter participation of new voters and uses a creative, hands-on learning approach to advancing black women's human rights, youth empowerment, and civic engagement efforts in Georgia. Women Engage supports black women, femmes, girls, and young adults to become impactful leaders, key decision makers, and effective agents for social change through integrated voter engagement, reproductive justice advocacy, reparations advocacy, and leadership development. Black women, trans black women, femmes, girls, and gender expansive individuals have always been at the forefront of impactful movements. Today, 
in the midst of severe shortages of necessities, such as baby formula and childcare, rising costs of groceries and transportation, and judicial attacks on our human rights and constitutionally protected bodily autonomy, Women Engage continues to fight and build power within our communities. Women Engage has been a part of the incredible sea change of political power and representation in Georgia. We have made over thousands of calls. We have knocked on hundreds of doors. We have helped thousands in their journey to vote and be heard. We have been the change our community needs. And this is only the beginning. Eight years down, a lifetime to go. Welcome to eight years of Women Engaged. We have so much more in store. Get ready, get set, let's go. All right, y'all, let's get ready, let's get set, and let's go. Eight years down, a lifetime to go, y'all. Y'all know we have more work to do, and that's the reason for the season, all right? So without further ado, we're gonna introduce and let y'all get any a little bit more insight on the lovely band and lead vocalist that's been serenading y'all this whole time, all right? Our girl, Falami, is a hairstylist entrepreneur, and she is the owner of the Fa Tarot Hair Salon located in Brooklyn, New York. She she has 20 years experience in the natural care industry and her style has been to showcase natural and black hair all over. She's been featured in Essence Magazine, black hair, hype hair, and more. Falomi's goal is to create an environment where Nubian people are honored, taken care of, and celebrated. Her passion for acting and creativity is what has led her to be a multifaceted artist and creative that you see here today. She's welcome to the stage, Ms. Falomi and the Music Matters Band. They will have another selection for you all today. If you're on the live, you didn't get a taste of this yet, so you're in for a lovely, lovely, lovely treat. All right? Welcome to the stage, y'all. Good morning, all. Okay. Just one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Falami Saunders Sani, and I am honored to be with you here today. Um, I just, before I start to sing, I just really want to acknowledge my best friend, Malika Redman. Um, I have the privilege of knowing her for most of my life. And I just want to speak about who she is as a woman. And this person that you see today, I want you to know she wasn't made, she was born this way. And she has been this leader, this advocate, this visionary since I can remember, since we were 13 years old, 14 years old, she's been fighting for everything, you know, for all people, women, men, children. She's just always been born that passion. This is what she's here to do. And I'm just so proud, you know, so proud to see her dream and something she worked on so hard. You know, when you start things like this, it's been eight years, but you know, it starts somewhere. You know, it starts in a situation that may not have gone your way. And you have to say, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna, I need to pivot. You know, I'm here to do something, you know, this way I was going doesn't seem to be the way, but there is a way because I'm here to do this. And I saw her pivot eight years ago and start Women Engaged from her kitchen and to see what it is today. You know, what has been for Atlanta, what has been for the nation, um, you know, and fighting for and helping us understand our power as individuals and what we hold, you know, what we hold, the power to vote, the power to make change, the power to see different things happen in our communities and in the world. And when they say one person can really make a difference, I have seen one person really make a difference. And so I just want to honor her and tell her that I love her. That's why she got me up here to sing today, <laughs> um, only for her. And um, Malika, you know, I honor you. You're my best friend. You've always been there for me. And you are a great woman. You're a great mom. And you're a great leader. And I am just excited to live God willing, many, 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 many more years knowing you, 
being a part of your vision, your growth and development, and taking women engaged all over the world. Thank you guys. So because of what I, you know, what I said and about Envisionary, I decided just to do this um, song today um, called Shadowlands, and it's about, you know, journeying and, 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 and you know, going out there. It's from Lion King, actually. Um, so um, I'm just going to do that for you guys today. Okay. Fancy.
Yes, let's give it up for Fulani. And these amazing vocals, these stunning images, we love to see it. So thank you all so much. We are about to jump into our awards uh, portion of the program today. And so I have the amazing privilege and honor of giving the um, introduction for our amazing fearless leader, Malika Redman. Malika Redman is a pioneer, feminist researcher, and human rights leader, and an avid world traveler. She's a trailblazer who has led the movement to advance women's human rights, racial justice, and youth empowerment for over 20 years, both across the country and globally. She is the co-founder and CEO of Women Engage, a nearly decade-old initiative that develops the civic leadership of black women, femmes, and girls through our year-round nonpartisan voter engagement and legislative advocacy. She has managed human rights, racial justice, and youth empowerment projects, both internationally and nationally, including the founding of the International Black Youth Summit in 1994. Malika also served as the first chair for the Board of Directors for Pro-Georgia State Civic Engagement Table. Pro-Georgia is a collective of over 40-plus organizations across the state that coordinate year-round to provide voter enrichment, empowerment, and education to our communities to ensure that we're holding our elected officials accountable to the things that we need, as well as protecting our access to the ballot box and fighting for progressive legislation that we need for our lives. She was also uh, recognized by Feminist Women's Health Center, uh, Planned Parenthood Southeast, and as a distinguished Rockwood Fellow of Leaders in Reproductive Health Rights and Justice. She is a global travel enthusiast with a focus on Africa and the Africa diaspora, a proud alumna of Spelman College, an adoring mom, an amazing auntie, and an amazing person all around for young people. And I'm so excited and privileged and inspired and low-key a fangirl of Malika Redman and all the amazingness that she does. And so please join me in an amazing round of applause as we welcome Malika to the stage. Thank you, everyone. I'm a little bit shorter than Michelle. Let me try to pull this down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of your beautiful faces today, um, to spend this morning with us here at the Pittsburgh Yards in the historic Pittsburgh community of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, one of the communities in which I have grown to be a part of and to love and to um, do so much of our important work in um, and that has welcomed women engaged and our work, our team and our efforts to get out the vote here in this community. And so really thank you for coming out, being a part of what we're here to do. And I'm just excited because I'm excited about not only, you know, the, as the video discussed and as everybody's been discussing, the growth of Women Engage, but also to really honor and acknowledge the black women who are part of our ecosystem of human rights, social justice, change makers, reproductive justice, health rights, um, and really um, have been doing this work in such an, an important way and often haven't received the, the recognition, well-deserved recognition due. Um, and so I'm excited that we can do that here today at Women Engaged. Um, and so if we can just applaud that, I'm just excited about what we're gonna be able to do today. And so the first award that I'm going to announce is actually our Alumni Award for Exceptional Work Beyond We. And so we'll be able to, you, you, I can hold the award up. And our award winner is Jill Cartwright. And she'll be joining us virtually. Thank you. And I'm just really excited about this because Jill started out with Women Engage um, as a student of Spelman College who came, yes, Spelman, um, proud of us, 
and um, came and worked uh, as a part of our We Vote We Rise signature voter engagement program, um, getting herself involved with getting out the vote, registering people to vote, learning about the, all the issues that connect back to you know, our social justice, our human rights, um, and really grew to become such a profound young leader and woman leader. In her professional capacity now, Jill serves as the co-founding program officer for the High Fund for Climate and Gender Justice, where they resource and collaborate with black, indigenous, and women of color-led communities in the U.S. Southeast and across the global South to restore sovereignty, create pathways to healing, and build power for a just transition. I'm so proud of Jill. Where she works funds our work now. And so it's so exciting and full circle, and we're happy to have you this morning, Jill. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And this award was so unexpected um, for me and I just have so much gratitude. Um, I also want to share my regret for not being able to accept in person. If you know me, you know I love a good brunch. <laughs> and while I hate missing the opportunity to celebrate with y'all in person, I'm just deeply grateful for the chance to share some love um, and gratitude virtually. Um, Thank you, Malika, first and foremost, for just co-founding such a beautiful organization and keeping the vision all these years. Um, I know that you've endured so much in the midst of building all of this, and I just want to be very clear as your comrade, um, as your fellow Spelman alumna, about the fact that your work is seen and appreciated. Um, I also got to shout out Michelle because we was in the trenches together, child. And I'll never forget starting at Women Engaged as a college student um, with a couple of my friends coming along with me and just thinking how smart and put, put together you were. And then just to find out a few years later that that was your first day on the job too. <laughs> and so just being in awe of your work also and the leadership that you bring to the organization and have um, done so for um, these past years. And of course, finally, I want to share gratitude to the High Fund for creating a space where Black women and gender expansive people like myself can have access and ownership to the resources um, that we've quite frankly been owed for generations. Um, that work feels really important. And I'm just grateful to be able to continue working with Women Engaged, um, such an, an important organization I feel so passionate about. Um, in my professional capacity now. I don't want to be before y'all too long, um, but we just came off the heels of yet another contentious election season um, in Georgia, another runoff. Um, and I know folks in Georgia are tired, but we've these elections have put us in the spotlight um, for a couple of years now and for years to come, I'm sure, as a civic engagement battleground um, as a state that's full of powerhouse organizers and advocates um, who can make the impossible happen. And in these two years, I've actually been really happy and excited to see Black women leaders in the state begin to receive some of the recognition and funding that their work deserves. And still, <laughs> it is not declared loud enough that organizations like Women Engage um, have been and, and always will be loving us. Um, before and after it's popular, right? And so I just also want to extend that gratitude again um, to the women like Malika, like Michelle, um, like so many Black women leaders in the state who have done this, this work without recognition. Um, and on the note of Black women and gender expansive people receiving resources and the recognition they deserve, I've been inspired recently by Lizzo and Trevor Noah and other folks who have publicly and just unapologetically loved and defended Black women, even when they had every right to claim their own spotlight and platform instead. Um, that, thing, that kind of thing is important. And so, yeah, I just kind of want to follow in that trend. And I've done some pretty cool things. Um, we can talk about it later. <laughs> Um, but I'm no stronger or greater than the community that has held me. And so I want to give some space to them. 
first and foremost, my mom, the person from whom I inherited my organizing superpower, um, to Dr. Leeds, Dr. Kumba, Dr. Spence, Dr. Guy Sheftal, who were beacons of heavenly light throughout my time at Spelman, um, Mary Hooks, who has been such an amazing leader and mentor and just an all around dope person um, for me and has helped me to come to political maturity. Um, to Eva Dickerson, Deshaun Harrison, Aria Marie, and all the folks who I started out with at AUC Shut It Down um, in Atlanta University Center where we started student organizing and just acting up. And now we're doing that, I guess, in the world and people are giving us awards for it. <laughs> um, and to my partner, Diamond, who has just been a rock for me and has made space for me to be able to do this kind of stressful, sometimes stressful, um, often, you know, thankless and just critical work, to be honest, um, and has also shown me that I can take care of myself and do all these things as a Black woman um, trying to change the world. So I just wanted to appreciate my community, the folks who have brought me here, and one more time, just give so much gratitude to Women Engaged. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Great to see you. So as you see, there's so much inspiration and you're gonna to continue to be inspired as we name our awardees today. Um, and so the second awardee that I wanna name, I actually want Michelle to come out with me because this dope woman deserves both of us to come and share some things about. Yes. So I remember, I think it had to be maybe like three years ago uh, through the recommendation of our last year awardee, Andrea Lanes, getting an application from somebody who was just super eager to get out here and make sure that people had the information, the resources, and everything that it took to make sure they showed that they were at the polls. And when I tell you, running laps around some of these folks, okay? Didn't let nothing stop them. Whether we was outside at festivals like One Music Fest in the intense heat, whether we were at bus stations and MARTA stations, was always ready, always eager, always excited about doing this. And I give it to them too, that when the things around 2020 came up, mm -hmm. they stepped up and rose to the challenge of learning new technologies and continuing to do the work and persevere and have been with us for almost three, going on four years now. And so I know me and Malika are super honored for this person to be with us. And so um, we want to present this award. We want to present the Anna Julia Cooper Award for Outstanding Community Leadership to Mildred D. Flowers. <laughs> yes. And when I tell you she will show up to work early and be like, I am ready right now to do this. And so we're excited for you to share some words with us, Diane, and tell us a little bit. Hey, everybody, I'm Diane. I use the pronouns she, her, hers. Oh, I need to thank God who's the head of my life today because I know without him, I wouldn't be here today. Um, we started out, we came out the door kicking. We came out the door kicking. We bus stations, train stations, houses. We did what we had to do. And at the end of the day, we all were a team. We always wanted to be at the top of our game. And if we, if we worked, we worked even harder to get there. I need to thank Malika, because at the time when I was hired, I didn't even have a car. They would make sure I got where I needed to go and be where I needed to be. I need to thank you too, Michelle, for putting up with me because I ain't no easy ticket sometimes to get along with. <laughs> I also need to thank Andre. I seen him earlier. And I'm, I'm just real grateful. And thanks, y'all guys. All right, can we get another round of applause for the first two awardees? 
Yes, we are so happy to be here today, giving you all an award. The reason for the season, again, is celebration. Celebrating women who are engaged in the community and who are here for you all and all of the things that we deserve as black people. All right? So if you didn't receive one, there are raffle tickets here. If you guys didn't get one um, on the entry, please make sure you grab one because we'll be calling out the winners by the end of the ceremony. Those of you who are watching online, we will have those items for purchase at a later day. If you received the raffle already, if you did win, we will have those things available for you later after the live, okay? All right, so while we're getting ready for the live Q&A, the live chit chat, I do wanna play a little game with you all, just to wake everybody up, y'all all right? All right, so do we have any Abbott Elementary fans in here? All right, so we're gonna play a game of this or that. All right, so it's either this or that, whichever one you relate to. So in the area of teachers, we have Janine with Mrs. Tiggs, which is a new overly eager teacher. She just got there, she wants to do things right. And then we have Mrs. Barb, our old school girl who just uses what she got to get what she want, right? She's doing her thing. So this or that, can I get a round of applause for Miss Janine Tiggs? She, she's a lot. I know she could be a lot. <laughs> we got any educators in the building? And y'all used to seeing those new teachers coming in. What about Mrs. Barb? She just like, all right. So yeah, I, 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 fi I figured y'all, I love me some Shirley Ralph. If you haven't watched Abbott Elementary, that's just a ploy, a uh, shameless plug, because they talk about a lot of different things that I feel like I've seen happen in communities, especially when it comes to education, especially when it comes to the youth. So that's just a shameless plug for that show. Um, and while we're getting started, I do want to introduce and give y'all a little bit of background on my co-host, Miss Michelle. Michelle, she is so awesome. And I just want to let y'all know how really, really awesome she is. Give me one second here. One second, guys. All right, while Michelle is getting up the notes for us, we're gonna play another game of this or that, all right? How many people listen to the Renaissance album? Oh my God, it's a little light. I don't wanna force it if we didn't listen to it. We're still, okay, so we are listening to it. Okay, so if you're that far into the album, we're gonna do this or that, all right? Virgo's groove is this. Ooh, y'all, they was just like, mm. Church girl is that. Y'all y'all choosing that. All right. One time for church girls, say hey. All right, we got church girls in the building. We love to see it. So without further ado, we're going to have a table talk conversation amongst some of the women who are actively involved in Women Engage. Our moderator this afternoon is Michelle. She goes by pronouns they, them, she. Um, they are a queer woman born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. They worked in social justice, community engagement, and politics for over 14 years, y'all. Ooh, girl, okay, we gotta get like you. They started their journey as a teenager and as the first black woman appointed chairman of the Kansas City, Missouri Youth Commission, where they led the team of young people to create policy and recommendation, recommendations for the city, of, the city government, excuse me. They, she went, they went on to study political science in Little Rock, Arkansas and at Philander Smith College. They moved to Atlanta, Georgia to pursue their master's in political science and has been with Women Engaged since 2017. Okay, CAU alum, where they started as program manager. All right, program manager to COO. Come on now, Michelle. Under Michelle's leadership, Women Engaged also offers ground on the ground and non-bipartisan um, voter registration and voter education at hot spots across G Georgia. Michelle, through Michelle's initiatives, you can find individuals at barbershops, transit stations, grocery stores, farmers markets, and more. Welcome to the, the stage. Without further ado, our moderator for today's Table Talk Conversation, Michelle.
thank you for that amazing intro. And again, back here with you all. And so I'm super excited for us to take a little bit of a break from our awardees to talk a little bit more about the amazing founding and what led to Women Engage. And so I would like to invite three amazing powerhouses to the stage, one you're already familiar with, Malika Redman. Um, our next two folks is uh, Leticia Jackson and Q Toffee. If you guys want to come up and get your seats, um, and let's give them a round of applause while I brag on them a little bit. Um, so as we know, Malika is our CEO and co-founder. Um, but when we first started, um, it was through Leticia's philanthropic connections offering support for Women Engage um, through the Groundswell Fund. That was our first funding partner in terms of really fueling our signature We Vote, We Rise program. And our IVE coach, IVE is uh, short for Integrated Voter Engagement, was actually Q. And so today we're just gonna kind of have like a little round table chat, get a little bit in inside their heads to figure out what led to this occasion, what was it like to create something this visionary? Because before then, there wasn't an organization that was uniquely affixed at the intersections of reproductive justice and civic engagement, um, doing this very intentional work of really blending this um, work together to not only, uh, of course, vote in our elections, but develop leaders in our community. Because the reality is, is that, I mean, we know what we need in our communities. And the, Goal should be is that we empower ourselves to be able to voice that to those who have the power to make the necessary changes. And so I wanna go ahead and offer up my first question directly to Malika and just talk a little bit about your inspiration. Like what led you to, this is the strategy that we need to take and how you, uh, you and Margaret came together and the rest of everyone else to really launch the We Vote, We Rise program and Women Engage, thank you. Yeah, thank you Michelle for the question, I'll tell you, um, really, the inspiration was Margaret. Um, Margaret um, said that we could do anything. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so she, so she said to me that we should bring together our skills, her savvy with regards to building networks in Georgia, in the city of Atlanta, cross issues, cross um, kind of work. She did cultural work here in Georgia. She also did political engagement type work. She um, did a lot of work with the city of Atlanta to build young leaders, young artists. Um, and, and I was someone who did a lot of research, um, advocacy around reproductive health rights and justice. Um, I had led some organizations in the past that worked on issues, um, policy issues that impact the lives of black women, femmes, and girls. And she said, we can do this ourselves. We don't need somebody else. And, and so between Margaret's cheerleading us on and Letitia's mentorship and Q being able to help us really put the nuts and bolts together to come up with our plans, our work plans, our campaign activities, um, and also help us learn how to you know, put all of those pieces together, be able to analyze and understand the data, understand our um, demographic, the communities we wanna work in, and pinpoint the voices and the folks that really we wanted to you know, um, invest in and build the leadership and the civic power. And so it's the lady sitting here and Margaret in spirit. That's how we got to Women Engage. No, I appreciate that. So Leticia, what was it like coming in on this amazing vision and like, how did you feel in that moment? So first of all, I feel like the Supremes right now. because <laughs> we're, we're having a reunion. We, the three of us haven't been together for several years, so I f I'm feeling really good about that. But it, it really was a situation where when, life's gi when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. We found ourselves in a situation, I was the program director for um, the Groundswell Fund at the time, and Q was a consultant working with me directly with the Integrated Voter Engagement Program, and Malika was actually working with another organization um, in that program, and she transitioned out of that organization, and I would say, but we can't lose you and your experience and your knowledge in this work, because the Integrated Voter Engagement Program was a program designed to have year-round 
voter engagement and not in, in, in relationship building and community organizing, um, not just six weeks or two weeks or four weeks before an election cycle and people come around and say, we need you to vote, we need you to vote, but to actually build power in community is what it was designed to do. And Malika was one of the best at the metrics and the planning and, 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 and the building of relationships and making sure that the community and the community's voice was centered in the work. And I, so I said, we can't, we can't let Malika get away, right? So we had a conversation, she, Malika, myself, and Margaret, and then we later brought in Q. So we actually started this conversation in California, I think, didn't we? At one of our staff retreats. And I said, you guys can do this, right? Just start your own organization, <laughs> you can do this. And really that's how it, how it started, really is just encouraging Malika and, and, and identifying, understanding the innate leadership qualities and abilities that she brought to the table. And the fact that, as she says, she's a researcher. So she, she was really grounded in uh, being able to have real results, right? And not just, okay, we knocked on, uh, I think about 100 doors, we, you, know, you can't tell us who we talked to or anything. She was really metric based in making sure that no, we know who's in the community. We know who should be involved. We know who should, we should be talking to and not just bring a bunch of people together and do some work and then go home. So she was really interested in power building and I saw that and I saw that it was important for the community in Atlanta that she was from because I actually basically grew up in Atlanta as, and when I say grew up, when I came to Clark College, I, I was like, had been 17 for two months because I graduated early. And I'm originally from Alabama, so I spent about 30-something years here, m most of my adult life here in Atlanta. Um, I don't live here anymore, but I lived here in Atlanta. And then one of the first people, I have to say this, one of the first people that I told Malika she had to talk to was Abel Mabel Thomas. <laughs> and, <clears throat> And our relationship, Mabel and our relationship goes back to the early 80s, uh, even before she was first elected to office. So this work is really about relationships and the relationships that you spend the time to build and that you spend the time to, to grow and nurture. That's what it's all about. You cannot be successful in this work without relationships. So yes, thank you for that. And so as you mentioned, like we love our metrics, we love our data, and I was just telling Q earlier, they provided like the blueprint when it comes to the campaign math. A lot of people talk to me about like the data and stuff like that, and I was like, it's because of the inspiration of Q and all the amazing work that they were doing with the We Vote, We Rise program that really like led to my own takeoff. So I would love for you just to talk a little bit more about like when you got in and you started coaching and really developing some of that math and strategies um, around IVE and how we deeply invest in people and using the data to really inspire that. Because I think data gets a bad rap sometimes, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I feel like a supreme up here. I have to say, this is the, the highlight of my year. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kanita Toffee. I go by Q. I'm Senior Director of Groundswell Action Fund. And I have to start a little bit further back um, to tell the story. Um, I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa. My parents voted for the first time in their lives in um, 1994 for Nelson Mandela. I was 10 years old at the time, was with my mom when she marked her first ballot. My dad was a very proud poll worker. And this was a defining moment for me, it shaped my life's path. Um, some years later, we immigrated to Florida and I helped to co-found an organization rooted in principles of democratic struggle in Florida. Um, later, I joined Groundswell, where I got to work with not just one organization, but many across the country to connect um, everyday people with their power in, um, in our democracy. Women Engaged is one such organization. And um, about eight years ago, when I was introduced to Malika and a 
in Atlanta, I felt um, my world expanded um, as much as you like to, you and Michelle like to offer that I, I was the coach and, ta and taught you all things. I learned everything I know about the reproductive justice movement, about history and politics of Atlanta and this country from you, Malika, uh, you, Leticia, um, where I just benefited so much from um, your leadership, the bold, clarity, strategic leadership that um, the state needs and our country needs. Um, so back to IVE. Um, having built a statewide organization in Florida rooted in the year-round model, it takes, it takes everything. <laughs> it takes everything, but most of all, the firm belief that building people power is what is going to change um, material conditions for our communities. And so voter engagement, integrated voter engagement is centering those relationships rooted in community, um, building trust such that um, we are going against what we, uh, many of us have experienced in the civic, um, in, uh, civic participation, which is our votes get used a few weeks before an election and nothing essentially happens, right? So this model that women engage have perfected over the last eight years is about centering the change um, that we need to see and the power that we can build when we help everyday people connect those dots with, you know, wh whomever is running for office to what do those people when you put those folks in office, what are they supposed to do for us? Um, and just connecting the dots of uh, what the vote actually means in terms of what's happening in Washington at the state um, level, the local level. This is important because so, so much disinformation exists in, in the world, digitally, in media. Um, so this everyday love, care, and attention to um, the community relationships is actually what IVE is all about. And I will say that this is working with Women Engage, getting to know you, Malika, Michelle, Leticia, um, is the highlight of my career. Um, and I'm just so proud and happy to be here. Celebrate Yay. that. Oh my goodness. I have all the warm and fuzzy feelings right now. Because there's so much power here on this stage. I, I think to myself about how Audre Lorde tells us that we you know, don't live one-dimensional lives, we live multi-issue lives. And I find that like, what's so enriching about the strategy of IVE is that it recognizes that whole humanity. Because so many times people want us to parse out our identities or view as voting rights as a singular issue. But what I love about Women Engage is that it's all interconnected. And the ways in which I show up in my advocacy is in the ways that I show up at the ballot boxes, is it the ways that I show up in community, or the ways in which I show up for my community members. So I would love for you all just to talk a little bit about more about like the importance of that strategy and why for people who are here today and also those who are viewing at home or in the future, why it's important that we don't disconnect these issues and how women engage is really changing the scene when it comes to really holding that line that it's not just voting rights in that way, but these are our human rights. Mm -hmm. I'll, 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 let me start. So first of all, every single thing that happens in our lives are primarily out of some public policy that was made somewhere that connects to our lives, that impacts our lives. And so it's important for communities to understand that they have the power to impact public policy, that the elected officials that make public policy work for you, right? And that you can hire and fire them by exercising your, your right to vote. And your right to vote is your power. And when, when you are, and the one thing that I loved about Malika and her approach to the work is that she was grounded in that, grounded in making sure that the community understood its power and was able to exercise its power. There's nothing like getting involved in a community, uh, particularly a group of people that 
have either lost hope or just just didn't feel that they had a voice or that their vo voice mattered or that their vo vote counted. When you explain to them and educate them on the processes of policy and how policy is made and how it governs their lives and the power that they have in that to exercise that. And when you see a community really get it, when that light bulb goes off, when they understand that they made a difference, just like in the election you just had here in Georgia the other day, when you understand that you can make that kind of difference, there's no turning that light bulb off. There's no turning people around when they realize that level of power. And that's the thing that I recognize about Malika, that she understood um, what what was gra what grounded us what grounded us in being able to talk to community and getting community involved in public policy and involved in and all of the issues are connected there are no separate issues right you don't work you don't work just on reproductive justice or just on voting rights it impacts your daily job it impacts your community how your trash gets picked up everything in your life what school your children go to how they get educated Everything is connected and, it's, and it all goes back to public policy and, and civic engagement. And Malika understood that in a real serious way that I felt was important for, for the work that she was doing in the community. And, and, and I knew that she would do exactly what she's done, is turn this organization into a powerhouse that makes, different, makes a difference in elections that you can actually track and show and prove that the work had impact. Thank you, Letitia. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And, you know, the, the other part I will add to what you were saying is, you know, the power of black women. That what we also recognized that women engaged was that, and what I've also learned over the years, um, is that what black women are doing often, um, you know, without a whole lot of fanfare is, move this democracy to more progress, to, to, to be more equitable, to save our planet, um, our health care, to make sure that racial justice is something that is not just some kind of talking point out here, but putting their bodies and their lives on the line every day um, to protect their families, communities, and are voting consistently, voting consistently. Um, and that, that was also happening here in Georgia. And not only do we go out and vote, but we make sure that our church family goes out to vote. Our community is going out to vote. We are volunteering at the polls. We are protect, doing election protection. But we're also not having, at the same time, that we do that kind of deep investment the issues that are intimate to our lives are not often getting the recognition that they deserve, the protection, the policy protection, the respect of, the le of leadership to ensure that our rights are protected, respected, and our leadership is respected and well-resourced. And so Women Engage wanted to make sure that, you know, we were putting to the forefront and centering the issues that were important to black women's lives thriving. Not just um, making it, <laughs> not just getting by, not just juggling this and that and, and keeping it going, but thriving and that we can hold those in power accountable to our joy, to our happiness. We can hold our families accountable, our communities accountable, and we can prioritize ourselves unapologetically and make the personal political. And we can have people back us up, support us, and resource us because we know what we need, we know what this country needs, we know what our communities deserve, and we deserve the spotlight. And it was that is that piece too, and it's, it's been exciting. And as we've seen so much important transformation happen, breakthroughs, historic breakthroughs in public leadership in this state, this southern state, and also in this southern state leading the way nationally. 
And that Women Engage has been able to be a part of that. It's been really exciting. Yes. I'd like to add one, mm -hmm. one thing to that. The other thing that's really important that Women Engage and Malika is doing that was actually demonstrated with the two awards that you just witnessed is building new leaders, yes. right? Um, and lifting up young black women to lead in this work, which is really important. Um, how many of you, and I'm proud, you probably all know, don't raise your hand if you don't, because, but how many of you know that since they have been taking uh, polls and been, been keeping records of voting history that black women have been the highest voting block of any election in this country ever. How many of you knew that? Okay, so in, in it was I think like 2018 mm -hmm. maybe when they really started talking about it. I had a, um, I did a, just really briefly, I did a, a talk with some young, some young college age students from Clark and from Bennett College with Save a Girl, Save a World. And I asked that question, none of them knew that. Because we as black women have not been getting the kind of recognition for the power that we bring to the table. But it's organizations like Women Engage that, that makes that real, that, that show, turns that into practical application, that you can actually see the work and see how the work gets, um, gets turned into power and how you get to, to realize that power. But understand that black women in this country, we've saved this country yet again this time, and we've been saving this country in election after election after election after election. And this is the kind of power building that makes that possible. And I'm gonna pass it to Q, because we've been talking. You wanna add anything to that? Okay. Yeah. No, this is amazing. And I'm loving where this conversation is going. And I could honestly stay here all day. But unfortunately, we, we have, have two go. more people to award. <laughs> but I do wanna end us off with one last question, because as you said, like you, you all were here in the beginning, and it's been an eight eventful years. And I mean, since I've been here, we've had a runoff every single year, regardless if it's municipal, state, or federal. So I would love for you guys just to think, like as we think back on the last eight years and we think to the future, what are you most looking forward to as we close out this discussion today? I'm gonna let Q start, because I've been talking too much. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to our collective liberation because this work is all about that. Um, we leverage these electoral moments, but um, there's a larger project, right, that we're all um, in together in this country. So I look forward to that. Um, this is about long-term work building power for the long term. And um, as uh, actually both of y'all just mentioned, in terms of black women being the highest um, and most consistent voting bloc in this country, when um, philanthropy and other um, very well-resourced <laughs> entities don't invest in the leadership of black women, gender expansive people of color and others, we, it costs our movement so much more. Um, and that is something I'm looking forward to it, um, by ensuring that there are many more resources get unlocked for organizations like Women Engaged and others doing this very critical, important work toward our liberation. So I'll stop there. Awesome, awesome. So I am amazed but not surprised by the growth of Women Engaged and by um, Malika's leadership. I knew she was gonna do exactly what she did and I'm looking forward to and really excited about what the next eight years will bring because I know there are gonna be big things um, um, happening and, and, and we may, maybe even we can convince Malika to get out there and throw her head in the ring. <laughs> Thank you, Leticia. Yes, let's have that conversation. <laughs>
right? And, um, you know, but it's powerful and it really starts with the ask, you know, in the conversation because we need to see more of our beautiful faces, you know, leading, you know, these efforts around creating the public policy that we deserve, you know, and, and as we continue to do the work to shift culture, to make sure that we are recognized, to make sure that the facts are being spoken um, and being understood and that we are not being marginalized from, um, you know, the landscape of this political moment. What I will say for me that's so important, you know, as we have had so many important breakthroughs, um, and for us not to lose sight of that, even in the face of some of the backlash that we are experiencing um, that is going against our voting rights, the backlash towards our civil rights, um, our reproductive rights, that there is hope because we are here. And what I'm always so amazed and proud of is that the, the infrastructure that has been built here in Georgia, primarily by black women leaders, um, like Representative Abel Mabel Thomas, to be here to make sure that not only are we getting out every year, but we're increasing that number. When we see young people voting at the rate, particularly young black people voting at a rate that is just completely breakthroughs for the state and sustaining their voter participation through the runoff elections, um, when there should be, you know, a natural sort of drop in turnout and participation, we know that people are connecting the dots between the issues that matter to them and their participation in this democracy. And when we see people that look like us in this room being able to launch really strong, viable campaigns from the top of the ticket all the way down the ballot, we know it's because of this work that we do every day to build community power, to make sure that those dots are connected about the issues and making sure unapologetically that the leadership looks like us. We're not going back. We are only going forward. And we're always gonna see us, like those of us in this room, leading. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much to our three powerhouses. Let's give it up. Yes. And so thank you all so much for sharing your gems of wisdom. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start transitioning now back into the rest of our program to award our other awardees. And as we do that, I want to go ahead and mention that, like, as Malika was saying, like, we have been building this power over the last few years. And I always think it's interesting when we have these major elections come up because all of a sudden everybody from outside of Georgia got something to say. But little do they know that the reason why we continuously run up against runoff against runoff is because we have been building so much power here. Because it was not too long ago that these elections were very, very stark in terms of the margins. And every year we continue to get closer and closer. Our people continue to be resilient as they overcome the barriers that have been put in place every time that we turn out. To the point that we saw with our runoff election this time around where they try to jeopardize our mandatory Saturday voting, where they restricted our early voting period to just one week, and yet 50 or 50% 50 of the electorate still turned out to vote. That was 7% less than what turned out in the general election where we had a month. Because Georgia's continued to show out, continue to vote in power, especially when it comes to those of us in the black community. Because the thing is, they always say, we're out here trying to save the democracy. We out here trying to save ourselves. We out here trying to save our people. And as Malika and the rest of our panel has shared was that it's when we deeply invest in our communities and in the leadership of black women, femmes, and girls is that that's when we see the changes that are necessary. And it's going to be important that we continue to have that momentum and continue to invest in those things year round. And so I thank you all so much for listening in on this amazing conversation. And so we're gonna turn it back over and continue to give our flowers to our folks while they're still here. Thank you. All right, give a round of applause for yourselves for just being here with us and enjoying the vibes. Um, just want to let you all know, if you are still hungry, there is food left over. They are prepackaged in the to-go boxes, so you could just grab them. And the raffle tickets, they are in the front um, at the purple table. You can grab those as well and just enter in, and we'll be announcing the winner at the end of the evening, okay?
All right, so don't be shy, y'all. If y'all want food, y'all can eat as much as y'all can. Y'all can take some to go for the little ones who weren't able to make it. Um, and while we're getting ready for the last two awards, I want to play one last game with y'all of this or that, just to see how y'all are feeling, right? Okay, so we're in the internet age, right? But knocking on doors and going outside really did help. So we have this or that, internet activism or going outside. This internet activism or that, going outside. Going outside, y'all. And that's the reason for the season. That's the reason why Women Engage is so important to our community. Just one last fact for y'all, because I know we gave y'all a lot of information today. There are 7 million registered voters in Georgia, and only about 4 million people voted this year. So y'all, we still have more work to do, whether it's registering people to vote or just simply reminding them to vote. Um, so just know that you too can help be engaged as a black woman. All right, and I'm going to welcome Malika back to the stage so she can give out the last two awards. Thank you so much, Kwanana, for that. Can you all hear me? Okay, very good. Because I want you to hear me. Because our last two awardees are two exceptional women that I am so proud. You know, one of those things, this was one of those moments when I got an opportunity to say, you know, I want to award two special people, when I said, wow, we've really grown as an organization because we get to award these two amazing women. And so I'm very proud to be able to do that today. And so the first person I'm gonna get a chance to speak about is Kwajalein Jackson, my Spelman sister, and currently serving as the executive director at Feminist Women's Health Center here in Atlanta, Georgia, doing amazing work. She has the optimistic vision and pragmatism needed to lead an independent nonprofit, feminist, multi-generational, multiracial, reproductive health, rights, and justice organization providing compassionate abortion care in the South. A third generation graduate of Spelman College, Kwajalein continues her family legacy of racial justice, anti-oppression, and reproductive justice activism. She holds a BA in economics and an MS in urban policy and planning from the Andrew Young School of Public Policy at Georgia State. And prior to joining Feminist Women's Health Center, she spent three years as a program manager of Wonder Roots Community Arts Center and eight years as a credit risk manager for Wachovia Bank Community Development Finance Group a respected voice on reproductive justice movement building, Kwajalein is often sought after on the national level. She sits on the board of directors for All Options, Abortion Care Network, the Black Mamas Matter Alliance, and the LOLA. Kwajalein has been named as one of the one of the 500 most powerful leaders in Atlanta by Atlanta Magazine in 2020, 2021, and 2022. And in May 2022, she was featured on former President Barack Obama's Instagram feed for her work as an activist standing up for abortion rights and fighting for reproductive justice in the South, and for her remarks at Atlanta's Ban Off Our Bodies rally. Kwajalein is interested in opportunities to use a reproductive justice lens to spark dialogue, transform perspectives, develop leaders, and cultivate change. And you know this year has been a fight for our bodily integrity and autonomy, for our voice. And this is who has been at the forefront of that. And so I want to award to Kwajalein Jackson the Speak Truth to Power Award for Courageous Leadership. Kwajalein. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really honored to have been selected by Women Engaged and to be awarded by my Spelman sister, Malika. Um, 
in the table talk you heard earlier, you heard mention that Malika was recommended to speak to Abel Mabel Thomas as one of her first meetings. One of my first meetings when joining Feminist Women's Health Center was with Malika Redman. So I um, am so grateful for the partnership, for the collaboration, for the co-conspiracy co um, between Feminist Women's Health Center, Women Engaged, and the multitude of reproductive health rights and justice organizations that do work together in Georgia to change the face of our legislative body, to change policies that affect this state, and to change the conditions under which black people live in Georgia. Um, working in reproductive health rights and justice is difficult, and 2022 has certainly proved to be a doozy for us, um, but we remain undaunted, undaunted by the fight. And so, um, I just want to also acknowledge that um, my mother, Spelman alum, class of 75, is here with me, and also my colleague at Feminist Women's Health Center, and also my colleague, Naomi Desta Bell, who is here from our organizing and outreach team. Um, you can learn more about the work of Feminist Women's Health Center at the table near the front. Um, we are proud to continue on today to provide abortion care in Atlanta in spite of the restrictions that have been put between people and their health care, and to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of the leadership of Women Engaged. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here. Aren't these women inspiring? Like, aren't you completely inspired? Well, let me, let me go ahead and electrify you real quick. Because this, this powerhouse, brilliant woman that I'm about to recognize is really part of why we're all here in this moment today, who has been doing this work for three decades of standing up for social justice, for economic justice, reproductive justice, and what many don't know, that we have a gem in this city in Representative Abel Mabel Thomas because she was the one who brought the black women leaders together to form the movement for reproductive justice. That's who she is. You know about reproductive justice today? It's because of Representative Abel Mabel Thomas. For over 30 years, Abel Mabel Thomas has been at the forefront of fighting for freedom, justice, and equality for all Georgians and disenfranchised people around the world, whether as a community organizer, civil and human rights activist, or elected official. She has been a constant force for good. She is sought after motivation. She is a sought after motivational speaker at conferences, colleges, and churches, and has traveled throughout Africa, Asia, and Europe. Her emergence onto the political stage began in 1984 when she was chosen as a presidential delegate for candidate Reverend Jesse Jackson at the Democratic National Convention held in San Francisco, California. During her 26 years in office, Mabel was the youngest member of the House in 1985. In 1997, she sought another public office, winning the Atlanta City Council post, one at large seat, which allowed her to focus on quality of life issues most impacting people throughout Atlanta. Representative Abel Mabel Thomas is the convener of the 12 Mothers of the Reproductive Justice Movement in America which coined the phrase reproductive justice. Yeah, give it up, let's do that. And yes, and set up the framework for the principal application. She is one of the founders of the organization Women of African Descent for Reproductive Justice and is currently the executive director. Her passion has been around women, family, and health issues, thereby leading the charge to prevent black women from dying at childbirth. Georgia leads the nation in, mater in maternal morbidity. Additionally, she chaired the study committee on minority participation, diversity, and inclusion in the $9 billion film and, and television industry in Georgia. She served on 
natural resource and environment, science and technology, economic development and tourism, and congressional reappointment. Representative Thomas is also the founder of the Greater Vine City Opportunities Program, Inc., which provides youth and family enrichment and educational opportunities for high-risk urban youth throughout Atlanta's west side. She was able to purchase the historic English Avenue Elementary School in the English Avenue community, which will be converted into a multi-million dollar state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, high-tech global community center. This 3.2, this 3.2 acre development will also include community gardens. This is yet another example of her passion to change the world, one person at a time, one block at a time, and one community at a time. Women Engaged wants to present to you, on behalf of Women Engaged, the Ella Baker Changemaker Award to Honorable Abel Mabel Thomas. Please be standing while she's coming up to the stage, y'all. Yes. Want to honor her for all the work she's done for us. She paved the way. As they said, this woman paved the way. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. Thank you so much. Uh, first, give an honor to God, who's the leader of my life. Um, it's an honor to uh, be here and an honor to be honored by so many dynamic people who were on it. You can tell the degree of a program based upon the people that's being on it. And so I am honored to be a part of the group that was honored today. And I was just uh, talking with Quandala, uh, uh, and she said that uh, we, I was trying to remember what day that uh, myself and her we served on a panel with the uh, National Medical Association, which is the base of the Black Medical Association in Georgia. They were in Atlanta, had an opportunity to speak, and I got a chance to know how dynamic she was and is. And so um, uh, to then come back by the end of the year, because sometimes as your year be going on, you be like, now it gotta be something that's gonna really happen in this year that's gonna take things to another level. And so when I got the Corresponding about women engaged, I said, "Okay, Lord, do it, do it, Lord, do it." You know, and 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 the, and the piece that's so good um, is how the Lord is merciful. He has been has allowed me to have a full, successful political and public service career, and then at the same time the biggest issues of our time was in June of this year when they overturned Roe versus Wade, okay? And so that was another point of galvanizing people and women specifically to stand up for our rights and say hands off our bodies. We are the decision makers for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then when I heard uh, Letitia say, save a girl, save a world, I'm like, I like that. I mean, think about that, save a girl, because the mothers are the, are the teachers of the family, the one that keeps that core group of, of the family together, and so save a girl, save a world. And, and then when I think about the way this past election was, it lets you know that the, the Lord does make the right person win, but the reason we had to pay such attention to what was going on was the fact that the most qualified person does not always win an election. Y'all understand that? 
you know, um, I ran to, for the unexpired term of John Lewis, the Honorable John Lewis, and to give you a little background, in 1986, when he ran for Congress, I was the only elected official that endorsed John Lewis. Stay with me for a minute. Stay with me for a minute. Now, once he passed, every elected official you ever seen, heard, was on TV and talking about their relationship and how they support him. But the reality of it is, black Atlanta, the middle class Atlanta, was not for John Lewis. Nope. They was with Julian Bond. Right. And yet, at the same time, the dichotomy of that is, I worked as an intern for Julian Bond, because he's from Vine City. And I'm from Vine City, English Avenue. So, but the Lord, the reason I've lasted as long as I have is I'm spirit Lord driven. And I didn't want to go myself with John Lewis. When you have Julian Bond, you know, and John Lewis, I mean, it, it seemed like a clear choice it would be Julian Bond based upon his work, both people's work in the civil rights movement, human rights movement. But, and everybody lined up the way people thought it would be because you got to remember they had been asking John, I mean, Julian Bond to run for Congress way before the time he ran, but he didn't do it. All right, so timing is important. All right, and so when everybody got ready to make endorsements, every, most every elected official was with Julian Bond. And here it is when John Lewis passes, I'm li sitting at home listening to a, a program and I hear former mayor Bill Campbell say, yes, I was the only elected official to endorse John Lewis. I said, oh Lord, they do it while you're living. You, they lie on you while you're living. They don't wait till you go and then take your place. They lie on where you're living. So I, so I just have to have his phone number. So I text him. I say, I just heard you on TV and um, I know you ran the campaign along with Kevin Ross, CT, CT. I say, but you, CT Martin, that's right. CT Martin, right? And he, he wasn't even city council at the time. He wasn't even city council at the time, but he's a, he was an unbelievable campaign organizer and strategic person and campaign manager. So I said, I know you were at the campaign because I remember bringing my young people into the campaign mm -hmm. And we walked, she said, was there. This is my first shot that she was there. And we walked into the campaign and we walked into John Lewis' campaign. They cheered because they know we were going to take it to the street. Oh, we had a little girl who's five years old who said, Hello, my name is Mama Sia. Vote John Lewis. John Lewis. He serves the masses, not the classes. Vote John Lewis if you're concerned about my future. Now, come on now. Come on now, come on now. That's the way we roll. That's the way we roll. Letitia, Sade, that's right. So, so as, it, as it relates to the ground game in politics, I don't care who you say think it is, ain't nobody can do the ground for you like Abel, Mabel, Thomas, and my team. Nobody. And we do what everybody else do with a fraction of the money they have. What would it be like if we ever had the real money to run for office in Atlanta? We, 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 in other words, people don't even really go door to door. Now we have these big elections that every, money is in play everywhere. So they pay canvassers good money now, 15, 20, 25 dollars to go door to door. But we had people who would volunteer, do it for free, that would go door to door. And so up until about five years ago, I never even mailed. I didn't have to mail because my ground game was so strong you would have thought I mail, because we were in the street, okay? So my text to, to, to Honorable Bill Campbell was, I brought 20 young people to the state capitol, and I was wearing a gold dress. What color suit did you have on when you endorsed him? <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear me. What color suit did you have on? Because I don't remember you ever endorsing him. I know exactly what I had on, how many kids, what room in the state capitol we was in, you know. And let me tell you this part here, y'all, because 
Well, I tell you, I'm spirit driven. Once I had come into John Lewis's campaign office on Peachtree Street, um, John Lewis would call me on my answering machine. And every time he would call me, I would say, click out, because I didn't want to go with John Lewis. Who, would, who, want, who wants to go for somebody that everybody don't want to go for? And, they, and, so, and then people would call me, and um, Michael Thurman, who I helped get elected to state representative, he said, you know, you, you might think you're a self-made man, but it's black women help them. And uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. And so um, he called me. He said, Mabel, you have endorsed John Lewis. He said, if John Lewis don't win your district, they're going to take you out of politics right away. I said, don't worry about it. We're going to win. And later on in life, when I talked to, I talked to Michael Thurman, he says, Honorable Michael Thurman, he says, he said, you didn't know that when you hung up that phone with me that day and said that y'all was going to win, he said, I said to my uh, law partner, if John Lewis win, Mabel is magic. That's what he said to me. <laughs> so y'all know I'm magic, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, magic as in magnificent. All right, okay. Magic as in irresistible. Oh, okay, let me tell you about that. So what I do is when I come into a room, I didn't do it with y'all because I know y'all had my back. But usually when I come into any room, I say what I say to the Lord, Lord, make me irresistible. Okay? Make me irresistible. You can't, you know, you may have come, I've seen, I've been in rooms where somebody who's an enemy started walking towards me and I say, Lord, take care of him. Mm -hmm. And next thing that guy turned the other way. You know, so it's a so this is a spiritual movement that I've been a part of. If you think it was a political move, they would have destroyed me in politics, speaking up the way I speak up for black people and marginalized people in America. But you can't do it when it's when the see it ain't just that the Lord is on your side. The breakthrough in life is that you be on the Lord's side. Yeah. Oh come on, that's the breakthrough. Yeah. That's the breakthrough. You got to be on the Lord's side. Yeah. Not he on your, you know he got your back, but do you have his back? Yeah. Are you willing to stand up for justice in the, in the Lord in times when they say, be quiet? Don't say that. This, uh, this, you can't talk about religion. I ain't talking about religion. I'm talking about the Lord. Right. It's a part of me. I'm just talking about a part of me. So I'm, I'm just here to tell you that, that there's a power um, where even if I turned off the answer machine and say no to John Lewis, I, I don't want to hear that. I would go out in the street. John Lewis would work hard, though, in, when he ran for office. He would be out all night. He actually had a page out of my book. He'd be out all night at supermarkets, 24-hour supermarkets, and I would see him. I would duck because I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. And so eventually the Lord said to me, get in your van. We had a van that a uh, lady named um, Magnolia Church used to, uh, on Magnolia Street used to um, let me use Miss Helen. And the Lord said, get in the Band, take the kids, do the press conference and whatever. So finally, I talked to John Lewis, and John Lewis said to me, if I ever needed you, I need you now. Mm. And so I said, okay. Okay, Lord, I just I get beat up because if he don't win, they're going to they gonna take my little seat. I just had it for one year. <laughs> I didn't get elected in 85. By 86, I'm endorsing John Lewis over Julia Bond in a city that's pure bougie. Oh, y'all don't want to say it. You know what's going on. Oh, y'all know about Atlanta, don't you? My title made me middle class, not my where I live at. You understand what I'm saying? My title. State representative is a big title. City council, citywide is a big title. But the real deal is I lived in the hood and still live in the same house I was born and raised in. Come on now, I'm credentialed. I'm credentialed all the way. And so what about the power of yes? The power of yes is the fact that I've been trying, I'm, I'm writing a book, and I'm trying to keep, keep trying to figure out what the title gonna be, what the title gonna be. But but one thing about it is, she said, write it. It'll come. <laughs> It'll come. Innocence and leadership. If I probably had a know that I was doing the things I would did, I would have been afraid to do them. But I never understood the impact of almost anything I did. I didn't understand it just was working, committed, had that zeal to do it, and was willing to do it. So. The bottom line is, I got a call from
from a young lady named Malika Redman. <laughs> Didn't know her from Adam's house cat, right? But she said Letitia had told her to call me. So this is my girl from the first campaign, Smiley Walker, her, Shiny, all these were like co-campaign people for me, work, I mean, uh, leadership for me. And so she said, talk to her. And so I did what I did. And then later on in life, I'm on a call and I see you. For the first time, I really see you. And, and she was looking at me like this. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's so good that you can see a next generation see you and, and have a level of amazement that who you have been has given them inspiration to who they are to be and greater things for her to be. Amen. And as far as having that conversation about elected office, just let us know what you want. <laughs> and, it. and we got it. We got, we got you. We got you. All right, y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Yeah. I mean, now, the reason you got to know this, oh, they got to go. Y'all better, look, what we're going to do is we're going to do this story at another time. Y'all just got to come for it because I got some stuff to tell. Y'all want to know about politics? Oh, yeah. Yeah, babe. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for, the, for this award. Thank you for so much for believing in me. Uh, thank you for believing in yourselves. And um, save a girl, save a world. Thank you. God bless you. All right, let's give another round of applause for our awardees, yes. Because of their work, we can be here today. All right, so without further ado, we are going to say again, thank you all for coming here this afternoon. We do have a video for you guys just to give a little wrap up of what has taken place and the reason why we're here and the work we have left to do, all right? So if you can look over here to my right, there will be a lovely video for you to feast your eyes on, all right? Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm the Chief Operations Officer here at Women Engage. We were founded eight years ago in 2014 by Malika Redman and Margaret Cardbo, who launched our first canvassing efforts right here in Southwest Atlanta. Since then, we have grown to host at least three campaigns each year that focus on legislative advocacy, voter registration, and getting out the vote. We also provide year-round political education and leadership development to deeply invest back in our communities because Women Engage's strategy is about deep investment in our communities. Bell Hooks tells us that love and power have to work in tandem for us to gain black liberation. That's why Women Engage launched our We Love You, We Love Her, We Love Them campaign because it's the love that we have for black women, femmes, and girls in our communities that drives our work. That's why I invite you to join us by contributing to our We Love Her campaign. No contribution is too small. You can donate five, 10, $15 or more each month to deeply invest in an organization that deeply invests back in the community. Thank you to all of our supporters over the last eight years. Cheers to all of our future endeavors and growing our base of supporters. And we are looking forward to seeing what we can do in the next eight years. All right, shout out to Michelle. Again, no donation is too small. $1 a month, $5 a month, $20 a month. It goes a long way, y'all. And it helps women engage to continue their great work for our community. All right, and so without further ado, I know we've been talking about it a lot tonight with the raffle, so we're gonna get that going for you all. Just give us one second. Stay till the end. I know, that's right. You get a chance to be a part of the raffle. So for those who got their tickets, Michelle, do you want to tell us what we're, yes. what the so, great gift is? Um, the great gift that we have here is from the Bear and Honey Co uh, Candle Company. It's a class make, it's a candle making class for two. Okay. So for folks who are here in person, go ahead and take out your tickets. For those who are listening virtual, we have something special for you coming online on Monday. So um, Malika, if you'll do me the honors, I'm going to... Circle it up, everybody get those tickets out. Get those Drum tickets roll. out. Okay. Alrighty, and um, the last four digits, we got nine, we got five, nine, two, five. 
Oh, I heard the disappointment. Oh, oh, we got some. Okay, can somebody take a look at that? Can, can we get some eyes? What is it? Sigma, Sigma it takes it takes the community. It's uh, the last four, five, okay. nine, two, five. All right. That's our winner. So you're going to get a gift certificate to a candle making class for two. And so thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for coming out today. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Malika to give us some parting words on her behalf. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank yourselves. This has been wonderful. And so thank you for coming out, joining us today. And we're just going to end with some beautiful music and love up on ourselves and enjoy, enjoy this, wonderful, um, this wonderful end to our event. Thank you. Y'all gonna get up and dance with us on these Woo! last couple of tunes. Come on, y'all. You know who you are. <laughs>